job like you have, there is no such thing as an average day. But talk a little bit about some of the things on any given day that you might spend your time doing. Well, <clears throat> well, well uh, I think in the course of a day, we're, we're dealing with academics, we're dealing with uh, medical things, we're dealing with transfers, we're dealing with travel, we're dealing with scheduling, uh, we're dealing with uh, media. You know, uh, poor Jim Marcioni, he's here today. You know, every day we're dealing with, you know, you know we get FOI'd on everything that you possibly can get up a wide on and, and we have to respond to those kinds of things. That's a full-time daily thing. Uh, we, you know, we have, you know, a lot of public relations. We have to, we have probably have more oversight committees and groups that look at college athletics. And, and, and I want to be real clear, Bill, this is not just Kansas. This is, I mean, we go to meetings and we all look at each other and say, what are we doing? I mean, it's kind of, you know, we all have the same situation. So it's, you know, I'm not, saying it's just at Kansas, but you know, we, deal, we deal with every social aspect of every student that we, we have. We have 600 and plus kids and we have over 200 staff people. So we, you know, we have close to 800 to, excuse me, 1,000 people that we're responsible for. And you, you can't imagine the kinds of things that we have, you know, a kid's you know, uh, mother or father pass. We had a situation, unfortunately, in baseball uh, just recently and it's been well documented documented that one of our baseball kids, his mother came to the baseball game on Sunday and Monday morning he gets a call that she passed away. Well, you know, when you have to deal with that, that's something you have to drop everything else that you have to deal with. And when you have 600 kids, we deal with every possible kind of thing. And uh, I think we're seeing more and more kids coming to universities and coming to athletic programs who have all kinds of social issues, all kinds of background things that weren't taken care of you know, previously, and we have to deal with those, and, and thank God we have the, the ability to help those kids, and, and so we're dealing with all kinds, I mean, there's, you can only imagine the kinds of things that we have to deal with, and whatever you can imagine, we're dealing with it more. You, then you have coaches, too. Right. <laughs> and I had the greatest line, Bill, and I say this publicly, uh, <laughs> when I was at the University of Connecticut, you know, we had uh, two very high-profile coaches, uh, basketball, male and female, and, and the uh, president there, who's a dear friend of mine, used to tell me all the time that uh, you're the, probably the highest paid diaper changer in the world. All I was doing was going from one office to the other, you know, like trying to help everybody go together. So, and he, we say that in jest, but, you know, you're dealing with some very, very powerful people on a day-to-day -day basis. And you have to be on your, your highest level of expertise, and you have to have a balance between everything. Balance, balance, balance. We talk about balance all the time, and we talk about being truthful. What's interesting is we can be truthful when people don't believe us. So, you know, that's something that happens because everybody has their own agenda and have their own way of thinking about things. You mentioned, Lou, that one of the toughest things that you have to do as an athletic director is making a decision to change a coach. What goes into your thought process on that? What are the factors in that? Well, I, I think, you know, probably the most important thing is integrity. And we think it's very, very important that we have coaches with, with the highest integrity and, and we, we want people who are great motivators, people who, we're asking a lot of our coaches, you know, we ask them to be heavily involved in the community, we ask them to be heavily involved in the student athlete's life, we're asking them to be heavily involved in all social aspects of, 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 of young men or women, you know, you know it's tough. I mean, kids have a lot of problems, and we're dealing with, uh, you know, if you look at football, there's 100-plus kids in a football program, and every kid is different. And so uh, I, you look for coaches who can balance a lot of things at the same time. Uh, you know, you might have a coach that uh, loses a game and then has to walk into a auditorium and meet with the media. You know, a lot of business people in regular, what I would call regular business, they have a bad day, they don't have to be accountable to anybody. Our coaches have a bad day and they have to be accountable to everybody. So you need, you need people with charisma, you need people with honesty, you need people with integrity, you need people who, who understand uh, that a student athlete has to balance a lot of things besides just playing a sport. You know, there's a you know, girlfriend or boyfriend, there's parents, there's you know, people next door in the dorm, it's, it's uh, you know, people who you grew up with. I mean, 
There are so many issues on a day-to-day -day basis that our coaches have to deal with. And you have to look for somebody who can balance all those kinds of things. Do you think the, do you feel that the salaries that are paid in, uh, in college athletics are in balance compared to the sa salaries paid on the academic side? Uh, there is no question in my mind, and, but we are in an arms race. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, I, I once went to a conference and I heard John Thompson, the great basketball player at Georgetown, uh, this was probably 10 years ago when he was working for Nike and people were criticizing him because of the kind of money he worked, he was making, and he had the greatest line and I still use it every day. Thank God well, he lives in America and we live in a capitalistic society. And he has, this is a kid from, from the, you know, the inner city of New York who worked very hard to become very successful and he's reaping the benefits of that. And people were against that. And, uh, but I do think, you know, I, I look at firemen, policemen, teachers, nurses, I, and I, I don't quite understand uh, why they're not being paid you know, more. Uh, but I also look at our coaches, and if we want to compete at the highest level and have the best coaches, best administrators, we're going to have to pay those people. So I didn't make the rules. I'm trying to follow the rules. And uh, I don't think any coach or myself or an administrator, when somebody offers you something, you're going to say, no, I don't want to do that because nobody else is getting it. So that's why it's great to be an American. In the NCAA tournament that just concluded, 39 out of 65 teams had a player born outside the country with a total of 68 international players in, in the big dance. Do you see this globalization trend here on campus and how do you see that affecting other sports? Well, I think all you have to do is go to the NBA right now and, and uh, I listen, you know, sometimes I'm not a big NBA person, but you, if you listen to the NBA, the announcers have a, a very difficult time pronouncing the names. Uh, but I think we have to put that all aside because we, you know, at universities, in, in Kansas is one of the great ones, we're all about diversity. And I think the more cultures and the more kinds of things that we can bring to our campus is, is beneficial. Um, so I'm not opposed to having foreign athletes or, you know, people from any place. You know, we want to have the best kids and, and if that kid, you know, there's probably no better kid and, and Cole knows is Sasha Khan. He's a young man from Russia, and, and I think we're a better university and, and a better basketball team and a better, I'm a better person because of my relationship with, with Sasha and what he's taught us and, and brought to this university. So uh, I am absolutely not opposed to that, and, and as long as everybody's given the same fair chance to be competitive and have an opportunity to compete, we should not ever close the doors to anybody. You see that continuing to oh, increase? Yeah, and... No question about it. Okay. No question about it. Uh, You've talked, we've talked a lot tonight about the importance of academics and of preparing student athletes. Uh, the Secretary of Education pointed out right before the tournament that 12 out of 65 programs had graduation rates below 40%. Now, I know that doesn't apply to KU, but it does apply to Big 12 schools like Missouri and Baylor uh, from the Big 12. Should the NCAA have a minimal graduation rate for participation in postseason play? Well, first of all, I'm not going to talk about Baylor or Missouri, so that's the first thing, Bill. <laughs> uh, they're both great academic universities. And, and uh, you know, graduation is very, very important. And I don't want to minimize gradu graduation in my statement, and I hope people don't take this the wrong way. I, I mean. I, I am uh, the perfect example of a person who had the opportunity to go to college and came from a background that I, my parents had no idea what college education was at the time. And if I wasn't fortunate enough to get an athletic scholarship, I wouldn't have gone to college. I would have worked uh, with my dad someplace. I, I've always said this. I think giving young people the opportunity if it's one year or two years or three years to go to college and have great experience, not only in the academic world, but travel and socialization and all those things, to me is as important as getting a degree. I mean, I, I think getting a degree is, I mean, I, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It's, it's helped me more than anything in, in the whole wide world. But I'm also a firm believer if we can take kids and give them an opportunity to be in college for one year or two years. You know, everybody says, you know, Cole Allred, 
you know, he should come back another year. He owes it to the university. He owes it. He's done everything that we've asked him to do. Uh, and he, you know, I think most of us will agree that you go to college to hopefully get a job and that you're going to further your opportunity by going to college. And I think, again, just using Cole, he, he's done everything that we've asked him to do and he's going to go on and, and have a, a professional career and, and he's going to be able to do a lot of great things for himself and his family and, and, and hopefully <coughs> our university. So I'm about graduation and I think graduation rates are important. I think sometimes we get lost in what it's all about. And, uh, you know, every school is different. And I don't think you can say everybody has to be on the same plane. You know, our mission at Kansas is different than the mission at maybe uh, Harvard or Yale. And we should not have to, uh, our kids should not be uh, measured the same way as those kids at Harvard and Yale. I'd put our kids against Harvard and Yale any day. They need to look up to us. Uh, because we really give our kids a great education. But I'm, I'm not totally convinced that a kid has to graduate. Now, I am convinced that they're here, they need to go to class, and they need to take <laughs> advantage of that. But if they choose to go in a different direction after graduation, I, I understand that. And, and you know what? What people don't, don't measure, and I'm sure the Secretary of Education is a lot smarter than I am, uh, but you know, kids leave college for all kinds of reasons that have nothing to do with athletics. And sometimes they choose a school that they really can't compete in academically. Sometimes they choose a, a school and then they have to go home because they have to take care of their parents. There, there could be a death in the family. Uh, sometimes uh, kids come to a university and then they have to transfer to another school. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that affect graduation rates. And as much as I, I feel like graduation rates are important, I think sometimes it's overemphasized. Okay. Being a leader, means that sometimes you got to deal with, with tough issues. And uh, uh, what one of the ones I want to ask you about is last fall there was a series of altercations between members of the basketball team and the football team. When you heard about that, what were your thoughts and what action did you take? Well, my first thought is that I want to kill every one of them. So uh, if I had them <laughs> close to me, and probably not kill them, but I was ready to do some physical damage except that I looked at some of those kids and said, maybe, Lou, you need to back off a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, we, we really preach, we really preach family. And sometimes within a family relationship, people have disagreements. And there was certainly a major disagreement between some basketball players and football players that could have been handled totally different and I was very, very disappointed with that. But uh, um, I think there's a couple of football players here and a couple of basketball players here who know that I brought them into the auditorium and probably said some things that I regret that I said publicly to them. Uh, and I think they all felt the same way coming back, that they knew that they embarrassed the university, they embarrassed themselves, they embarrassed their teams, they embarrassed the athletic department and the student body. And, and uh, we were... Uh, I don't want to say quickly in terms of one day or two days, but within a week we had this put, put to bed and, and we had to address it and it was embarrassing and it was distasteful. And uh, I think every one of them that were involved in it probably wished they hadn't done that. And they now, and I guess we look at it as, you know, and I don't want to minimize this, but they look at it as a learning, a learning experience. And, and I have a, a Probably people laugh at me, but I, I, I say that you know people put erases on pencils for a reason because people make mistakes. And our young people made some mistakes, so we, we would never erase it, but we tried to correct it. We, we dealt 